Hey everyone, it's Teresa, and today I have a collection of a ton of my favorite fall projects from previous years, mostly last year. So let's jump in and check out what I have for you today. I'm going to start off with this piece of wood. It is from a palette that I cut apart and I'm just going to start off with kind of removing any nails or at least pushing them down. I, I had a bit of a hard time. We actually cut apart the um, palette with a reciprocating saw and uh, some of the nails are still stuck in there, but I'm going to remove what I can and then what I cannot remove because it's pushed down into the board. What I will end up doing is actually adding in some of the Starbond glue and the accelerator to kind of basically keep it where it is so it doesn't come out. Uh, but once that is all said and done, I'm going to go in with my sander and I'm going to start off at probably like a 40 grit or an 80 grit sandpaper and really just kind of get rid of all of the like major stuff, major bumps and everything like that. Uh, now what I did end up doing is I did add a stain on here. This is the wood tint from Folk Art in the color Dark Walnut, I believe. Walnut? Walnut? Dark Walnut? Hold on. Walnut! I was looking right at it. And after that is done and dry, I do go in with my Star Bond. Like I mentioned, I'm going to cover up all of the spots where there may be any nails left and that gigantic not there on the back. I have like broken off the tip of my Starbond glue. So I know its lifespan is quickly diminishing. So I'm like, well, I may as well just use it. And now that that stain has kind of completely dried, because this is a water-based stain, I am going to go in again with the sandpaper. I'm really going to focus in on the spot where I added the glue so I can kind of uh, get the excess worn away. And then what I will do, because this is obviously very off, very different in, um, in between the stained wood and the not stained wood, I will go over that again with the, uh, the wood stain. But I do want to kind of give a good amount of sanding down just to to give it a much more weathered look. Now I am adding in a couple of different colors. I'm going to mix my own little custom color. That is pumpkin, crimson, and oh my goodness, what's the chocolate color? Um, I can't remember the name of it. These are all Waverly colors. I'm just trying to look at the my paint behind me. I cannot remember it for the life of me, what the heck it's called. But anyways, it's mostly the orange and the red color and then a little bit of the brown. I think I ended up putting up too much of the brown, uh, but that's okay. Anyways, what we're going for is kind of like a very like burnt orangey color. Um, I'm not going to lie to you. When it's in the little jar like that, it basically looks like carrot baby food. <laughs> so, um, that's, that's what we're going with, a carrot baby food kind of look. <laughs> Anyways, it works out. So what I did is I marked where my center spot is on my board, and I've already cut this out using my Cricut, and it says, welcome to our pumpkin patch. I took it out of the design space, but I kind of did a little bit of editing, so I'll link it for you below in case you want to check it out. And then I'm going to take this, and I'm going to just take a sponge applicator and I am going to go straight up and down and the vinyl that I used on here is a removable vinyl. I prefer this um, to use this for a stencil whenever possible. I've already weeded it and you'll notice at the top and the bottom I have two little circles cut out so that I knew where my like center spot was. That's a little tip for you. And now I'm going to remove all of the vinyl. I did two coats on the lettering and I'm removing it all. Just basically just peel it all back um, just like you normally would. And you're going to try your hardest not to gouge the wood. It is really easy to do. Um, it's not as big a deal on a project like this because it's obviously a lot more in the rustic direction of things. So it's not the end of the world if you do it. And never, don't worry about it. You can always fix stuff, right? Everything is fixable. Uh, so once that is all said and done, and I am going now in with a little bit of this DIY wax, and this is in the color dark. <laughs> Such a great description, right? It's just dark. It's almost black. To be really honest, it is a very, very dark brown, almost black. And I'm just taking it with a chip brush and going over all of the lettering at the very minimum, trying to just make it look slightly less um, baby food carrots colored and a little bit more rustic orangey burnt color. <laughs> I know guys, you're here for the description of colors. 
And once I have completely kind of gone over everything, giving it just a really nice rustic look, it's going to kind of be perfect for fall. I think this is the vibe I'm leaning towards. And I did not do the back side because we're going to save that for Christmas, but it turned out so cute. I absolutely love it. On to the next one. This is my inspiration. Um, I actually found it over on uh, Pinterest. I'll link it below for you in case you want to check it out. But I did the good old fashioned, printed it out and then traced the kind of shape of it. I cut it out myself. I didn't do it on the Cricut. Thought about it. I was like, you know what? We're just going to go le less tech. Not low tech because I still had to print it on my printer, but low tech. And I'm going to go ahead and just put a piece of painter's tape down the middle-ish. It's not quite the middle, it's off to one side. And now I'm going in with some of the chiffon cream from Rust-Oleum chalk paint. I am going to do two coats. I'll peel up my little bit of painter's tape and then I'm gonna reposition that right over the edge of that chiffon cream color so that I can then go over it with my burnt orange color, my, my custom color, my carrot baby food color. <laughs> it looks, it looks fine, right? It looks good. It's a good color. Um, it just looks like carrot baby food. Anyways, I am going to go ahead and go over that. I was so happy I made just enough to get through these projects, but we're going to go ahead and go over that other side of the pumpkin. And on this one, the when it ends up being done, I kind of feel like it looks a little bit like leather. I was really happy with it. Uh, it's not worried. I'm not worried about the line if it's like perfectly crisp because we're going to do something over that. Um, I'm going to take some of this surface wax from Chocotour and I'm going to put that over on the lighter color and then kind of in the middle. That way we can definitely get a pretty fair amount of coverage there because that's where the majority of the chalking is going to do be, be done, not do, we're going to be done. And then I'll go over some of the other side too. I'm going to just take this little, um, this is like an eight by 10 size and it's got tons and tons of little sayings and little graphics and really cute. It actually has like a whole bunch of stuff that goes with it if, as far as the surface goes, but, uh, I didn't buy it. I am going to use it though. This is says autumn vibes. It's totally different than the inspiration picture, but I can't wait. I'm so excited for it. Anyways, uh, I do decide to do this part first. This is a pumpkin with like little wheat looking uh, graphic design to it. But we're, don't worry, I'm not going to chalk a pumpkin on a pumpkin. Although now that I'm thinking about it, that would have been kind of cute too. Uh, I'm actually just using it more for the um, pattern. I wanted the pattern on here and I thought this would be kind of cute. So I'm just going to take some of the black velvet chalk paste and I'm just going to kind of be a little bit more on the sporadic side. I've got a piece that's going down the middle. I've got some going on the one side. They're not level. They're not even. I didn't want them to be. <laughs> I thought it would be kind of cute. Give it a little bit of texture. I like the way that the inspiration picture did it as well, but Again, I didn't have that exact thing, so I figured this would be a good way to kind of get a similar concept. And then I'm just going to kind of keep going, finding little bits and places to place it. And again, if you're, as long as you're not making it into the pumpkin shape or not, you know, going all the way around it, it's not going to look like a pumpkin shape. Now I'm going to place the Autumn Vibes part. I've already done my fuzzing on it, which is basically just removing some of the stickiness to the back. And then I will then just add in my same black colored paste, which in hindsight, I kind of wish I had done a gray to kind of make it a little bit more um, muted toned, but that's okay. It is what it is, right? It's black now. And once it's all nice and dry, I'm going to go in with that same wax from DIY and I'm going to just give it a really healthy coating of the wax. I'm going to go a lot heavier on the perimeter and then we'll kind of work it on in. I get all of my DIY products from uh, Upcycled by Brie. I'm going to list her uh, shop down below. She's also on YouTube. And actually quite a lot of the kind of like inspiration from these projects today were from her because she gets into like that industrial farmhouse stuff and she sells a lot of materials too. So if you just don't happen to have, you know, the scrap wood or salvage stuff, she is a perfect 
source to go and check out. I'm going to have her shop list for you below. Not sponsored by her. I buy all the stuff that I get from her. <laughs> I just thought that it'd be nice to share it. I love shopping, you know, small businesses, especially women owned businesses. So it's a great, you know, it's great when you can support people that are truly, you know, have become friends. But anyways, I am going to finish this up. Apparently I wanted to show it, the waxing process in its entirety. <laughs> um, I'm going to add a little bit of embellishment here on the part, top part of the pumpkin. Don't worry. I did end up painting the backside. Um, I did it in the chiffon cream color and did a little bit of waxing over it. But I'm going to add some of this twine here. I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue just to kind of keep it nice and have it not come untied, not come apart, all of that. And I'm going to add this Dollar Tree little faux leather leaf. I thought that it was just a really cute little touch. I am kind of loving all of the different textures and textiles and all of that for fall that I've seen coming out, you know, from different stores, Dollar Tree, Hobby Lobby, Joann's, it doesn't matter. I've seen tons of different like text uh, textures coming out. So I'm kind of loving that right now. So I did do a quick little brushing of the wax over the leaf just to give it a little something to emphasize some of those folds and make it look, I don't know, to me a little bit more realistic. It looks pretty decent, I'll be honest, even from Dollar Tree. Uh, but then I'm going to take a couple little beads. I think these came off of like a bead of garland at one point in time or another. And I'm just going to string just a few of them. I think I go with three. Yes, three. I'll tie a knot at the end, add a little bit of hot glue just to make sure that it doesn't come off of the end. And then this project will basically be done. I'm going to show it to you here in just a minute. Here it is. <laughs> I think it turned out really cute though. This is a cute little addition to kind of bring us into the fall time. It's August. It's fall, right? All right, so I have a, we'll call it a cutting board. For the lack of a better word, we're gonna call it a cutting board. I cut it off of just a piece of plywood and much like I did with the pumpkin, I'm gonna go in with the same wood tend that I did on our first sign and then we're gonna kind of go from there. Uh, I'm gonna give just a quick little sanding all around the edges. And this one is kind of an inspired by piece as well. If I remember right, cause I didn't save it. I, if I remember right, it came from Wayfair, but I don't think it's even available anymore. Now this one is gonna turn out pretty, um, pretty rustic. <laughs> uh, I like the concept. It definitely works on the concept. I made the mistakes so that you don't have to on these next two projects. All right, so I'm gonna take, I've got this roll of paper that I got off off of Amazon and I'm going to take some of this black chain that I got from I think like a planter thing off uh, from Dollar Tree and we're gonna make like almost like a little shopping list thing that you can post up on the wall keep your shopping list if you really want to get into the fall thing you can do like things that you're thankful for or I don't know to me food is is the same is is definitely in the same world as fall we eat more food come fall time just because it's cozy it's comforting it's warm we love it so i'm going to take a couple of screws and i'm just going to screw it down into the back side of my little cutting board faux cutting board, decorative cutting board, whatever you want to call it. I will put no food on this. Do not worry. Uh, and I've actually got this little bit of chain is hanging on to it. It's not, I did not screw the screw all the way in. This way the chain can actually be unhooked from that screw. Uh, that way, as I run out of this paper, I can't imagine it's going to happen anytime soon because it's like a hundred feet or something of the paper. I don't know. I, I will probably, this, this thing will probably not be on my wall long enough for that to happen, but you never know, right? You can never tell. It's a lot of, it's a lot of paper. That's a lot of shopping lists. Um, but then I'm going to basically have it positioned and then I will add another screw and add the other side of the chain. I do actually end up moving the first screw down a little. I don't remember if I show you, probably not, maybe, who knows? Um, we're gonna find out together here in a minute. Yep, I do it, I do it um, for you again, because I thought like that first one wasn't sitting quite in the right spot. It's perfectly fine. Again, this is this is kind of proving out a concept. Um, it, it turns out okay. Um, I mean, I like the, I like the concept. I think that the overall project turned out super rustic. <laughs> um, it's not as finished and polished as I would like, but that's my personal preference. Anyways, I add the screw in, in a different spot. I screwed down just a little bit. You know, I don't want to screw it all the way through obviously, but definitely, like I said, the concept is here. 
I am going to take a very cheap um, ruler that I think came from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to guess it is. One side, um, you know, the part where all the measurements are is like this stick stuck on rubbery thing. Originally, I was like, oh, well, it's kind of cute. A ruler, that's, that's handy. Then I was like, well, wait a second. There's a hole on one side. I don't want that part to be on my project. Um, I'm going to snip it with my miter shears. I just kind of held it up to measure it. I didn't do like a technical measuring method. Um, but then I was like, oh, well, I could flip it around and it'll look much nicer because I snipped off like the first two inches of it. So the ruler concept didn't really, didn't really carry forward. So I peel off the sticky parts, which comes off with no effort whatsoever. And I'm just right now sanding the sides of it, which you couldn't see. Um, and I attach it with some glue and here it is. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't show you the attaching part of the glue. I thought I had it in here, but apparently I did not. All right, so this project is 100% inspired by Upcycled by Brie because she shared that she was using the same exact wood for the exact same project. Basically, when I cut out my board, I have little scraps left over on the sides. You can see there, it's like a little puzzle. And I've already painted them in the um, chiffon cream from Rust-Oleum, both sides, front and back. And now I am going to decoupage some of this decoupage paper on there. I got this from my friend Kimberly over at My Victorian Heart. If you've been here for a little while, you know I love her little shop. And I'll have it listed for you below if you want to check it out. Again, woman-owned, small business. Uh, you can't you can't get much better than that. Now, um, in this moment, I'm going to let you know I put the uh, decoupaged paper on the wrong sides. Be aware, um, especially if you have decoupaged paper that has words on it. Uh, what's which uh, which book end? That's what we're making, by the way, a book end. Which book end goes on the left? Which book end goes on the right? Because the book end I'm doing this on right now has the first part of this word, and. Um, it ends up on the wrong side. But that's okay. It still looks good. I think at the end, it still looks good. Again, we're definitely proving out a concept here. Uh, I did add some decoupage gel. This one is from Pentar. It is called decoupage varnish and glue in the matte um, persuasion. I don't know. And that one came from Kimberly as well. And I added a pretty healthy coat uh, and very, very minimal in like the wrinkles or the bubbles or the whatevers. And that I am going to say is probably from using, you know, this nice quality um, varnish and glue and the decoupage paper. That one is from Roy Cycled, I think. I'm going to list it for you below. I think she still has this particular sheet available. It has like four different designs all in one sheet. I this is probably my favorite decoupage paper that I've used to date from this brand, not necessarily this sheet. I like this sheet too, but um, this brand is my favorite one to use. I'm going to go in again with some of the DIY wax. Keep in mind, whenever you use it, you want to scoop out however much you want to use with a clean um, tool of some type, like this little spatula knife. I think it came from the Dollar Tree as well. I clean it with rubbing alcohol, let it dry, scoop it out, and then clean it with rubbing alcohol again. I think the rubbing alcohol part is probably more than more than you necessarily need, but I want to keep it nice and clean so that you don't get anything into the wax because it is a lot of natural stuff that they use for it and you don't want anything growing in it. Um, so same kind of concept here. I'm just going over all of the edges and then kind of starting to pull it in and going over all of the wood edges too. I'm going to take a couple little scrap pieces from the Dollar Tree planks. I think that's what they're called. It comes in like a little pack of like five or six and I cut them down with my miter saw real quick and I'm basically just adding in little bits to my, um, the basically like the bones of my uh, bookend. I'm going to make a little L shape with them. Again, be aware <laughs> that it is the right side. This part I did not mess up on. It's just where the decoupage paper ended up on, but that's okay. It, it is what it is, right? I know for next time, I will be more than aware the next time I make these because I will definitely be making some again. Uh, so I do glue it down, make the L, and now here I am gluing the actual like design part to the longer piece. And this one, basically, I just measured it kind of by, by sight to see that it fit. I'll add some of the Starbond glue 
like I did them last time, and then I'm going to spread it around. I had I put too much. I'll add my accelerator spray and put it right down. I kind of marked it, used my ruler on both sides to find the right area to put it, press it down, and it's going to be a pretty bookend. Ta-da! <laughs> that was my ta-da hands. But they turned out really cute, even if they're kind of technically the wrong one on the wrong side. But that's all right. I'll know for next time. All right, so this one is definitely by far my favorite DIY. I'm gonna start off with this little cookie jar kind of crock situation. I have already sprayed it down with a coat of just matte spray paint, matte clear spray paint. And I'm gonna go in with this DIY paint in the color Apothecary. I get this from my friend Brie over at Upcycled by Brie. I'll have her website listed below in case you are curious, wanna check them out. Um, they're clay based. They're a little different than like a chalk paint. Uh, they do, um, they are on the pricier side, uh, but I'm actually starting to sell some of my things. So I'm trying to like upscale my paint and stuff. Anyways, uh, I'm going to use this color on this project. I've got a few different colors I'm going to use throughout this, uh, whole video, uh, mostly in the DIY paints. I'm taking a really flat brush and just kind of giving it a really good coat. This stuff dries pretty quickly in my opinion. So I'm trying to work fast. Obviously it's sped up, so it's not, I'm not working that fast, but I did break out my little turntable so that I can kind of move through this pretty quickly. I didn't want to take a super light color because I didn't want those, um, like flowers and fonts and everything to, to, you know, show through. I have a couple spots that are a little clumpier as I was kind of working my way around the crock. So I'm going to take a sanding block and just smooth it out just a little bit. And if I end up with any spots that go too far through and you can start to see like there, you can start to see the uh, crock underneath. I am just going to brush that over real quick with a little bit of the paint. I'll spritz a little water on it. It is, um, you know, you can kind of like revive it with some water. So I'll spritz a little water on it just to keep it going, uh, keep it from drying too bad. And I did paint the inside of the crock too. That way, as I am attempting to sell it, it looks like a finished project. It doesn't look like it's halfway finished. Um, if, if I were keeping it for myself, I probably wouldn't have gone all the way down. But since I'm planning on selling it, I want it to go all the way down. All right, so next I'm gonna take some IOD ink and an IOD stamp. This is like a little uh, barnyard animal situation. It's a little sheep, lamb, sheep. It's a sheep, right? Uh, I've already done the, what do they call it? A seasoning or, or whatever it is with the sandpaper on the stamp. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you have like IOD stamps, go check out the IOD website. I'll list it below too. Uh, that way you can make sure that you're prepping your stamps the right way. You only have to do it once. So now I have no backer on the stamp and I'm just going to go ahead and put that right down and hold it firm as best I can, smooth down all of the little spots on the stamp. It's a little tricky. I'm not going to lie. It's a little tricky. I was super nervous and I was like, okay, you get a one shot at this or you have to completely repaint it. <laughs> it doesn't just come off easy. It didn't turn out perfect, but I'm, I'm happy enough with it. It definitely has that vintage look to it. Um, I actually ran a picture of it by my friend Jamie from Simple Roots, Simple Living. I ran a picture by her so she could give me the like friend okay. <laughs> and she did. So that's why I went with it. I'm now taking some of the clear wax again from DIY and I'm just going to give that a pretty quick little like go over on it. One, I didn't want my paint to rub off and two, I am going to go over this with some dark wax and this is going to give you a lot more control over it. I didn't want to like completely saturate it with the dark wax because I still want to see my sheep underneath it. So I don't want to worry about doing it too much. And I'll show you a little tip here that I got from Brie about um, using waxes. So like I said, I do the full once over. I'm going to open up my dark wax. I bought the large container of it and I will probably have that thing for the rest of my life. Um, <laughs> it does not take much. I'm going to just take a chip brush and I'm just going to start slowly going over it and building up in certain spots. I don't want to build it up too much over the sheep, obviously, because then you will not see it. Um, and see right there in that little spot, I got too much. So what I'm going to do is I took a little bit of clear wax on the rag and it's like a little eraser and I, I did it again. Um, that wasn't really for display purposes for demonstration. It was an accident. Um, but it's easy enough to fix, especially if you put down that clear wax first. 
I guess it basically gives you a little bit of a barrier almost. And that's pretty much it for this first DIY. Like I said, definitely my favorite one. And I did forget to mention this. I did get this uh, out in one of my local Goodwills in Orlando, Florida, and it was originally priced at $9, but it was half off. And I thought that that was such a great deal. <laughs> it was like the deal of the day for me. And I have been holding on to it, ready and wanting to do a croc. All right, so on our next one, I'm just gonna do a really simple one with this rolling pin. Uh, another Goodwill find for, I believe, $5. Um, it's more than I'd like to spend, but you know, what are you gonna do, right? Um, so I have some milk paint in the color Lantern. I am going to do basically like equal parts of the paint powder and, the, um, and water. And on this, I noticed the easiest way, at least to me, to mix it up is to actually use kind of like a little spatula. Sorry, I had something in the water and I was like, oh, well, I don't want that in the paint. Um, and this milk paint, because it's milk paint, it is actually a food safe paint too. So just an FYI, um, I don't intend to use this on food, but, you know, or at least the rolling pin, I mean, the rolling pin, I don't intend to use it on food. Uh, but what I do end up doing to find the easiest way to mix it up, I started off with like a little stick and then I was like, you know what, this little spatula ended up working way better. See, there it is, a little spatula. Uh, I already taped down my rolling pin and then I am just going to go over it really quick. Like I said, super easy. I picked the black because I'm trying to kind of go with like a certain color scheme. I already had something painted in the black, which you'll see probably next week. Um, but I ended up thinking like, you know what? It would have really been really pretty to do that apothecary, but I plan on putting it in the rolling pin in the apothe in the, the pot, in the crock. So I didn't think that, that would make a lot of sense. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and put on my heat gun and I am intentionally have it on a pretty high temperature temperature and I am looking to kind of give a little bit of a, a cracking crackling over basically overdoing the heat on purpose because it's going to make it super super easy to chip away some of this paint I wanted to give it a really cool like chipped handle look basically pretending like it's older than it is and that's okay that's what we all do, right? We, we age things and that is what I'm going to do. So I got my sanding block and I am just going to take it. It's going to be so simple and easy to do because of that heat and because it's the milk paint and it's just, it's just the way it is, right? It's just makes it so much easier to do. And it's going to give it a really nice, authentic looking aged look. Uh, originally I thought I was going to also do like a darker wax on the rolling pin and I started working on it and I didn't like it so I wiped it off. <laughs> so once I've gotten a good chipping on both of those handles this project will be all finished. And here it is in the crock because it's adorable. I can't help it. I love it. I hope you guys loved this really sw simple and easy project. You're going to be looking at all your rolling pins now thinking like, can I do that? Can I get away with doing that to my rolling pin collection? And I say, yes, <laughs> yes, you can. All right. So I have a glass jar. This one is actually from a time when I was making apple cider donuts and it is kind of like a really cute glass jar for apple cider. Um, I actually got it online, on, like as an online food delivery thing. Um, that sounded wrong. Like it's basically they deliver your groceries for you. And I didn't know it was going to come in such a cute container, but man, am I glad it did. And as soon as I got it, I was like, oh, well now I'm not going to be able to throw this away. This was last fall. So I'm taking some DIY paint in the color faded burlap and I'm giving it a really good coat. I kind of wanted to test it out and see how it does on glass. And it seems like it did pretty well. I haven't had any problems with the, like feeling like it's going to chip off or anything. And so I gave it uh, probably uh, one really good coat. And now I'm going in with some of the dark wax again. And I originally I was like, well, should I do the clear wax? Should I just do the black wax? So I decided I am gonna do some of the clear wax. And that's again, just to kind of give me that little bit more of control. I probably could have skipped it, um, but I figured, you know what? I have the clear wax. I wanna give it a try, give it a go. I probably should have bought the big thing of the clear wax because I feel like I'm gonna use that probably every single time. Um, but you know. It's whatever. I'll buy, I'll buy some more later, right? 
So again, just a really quick coating of the clear wax. And then I'm going to go in, oh, what? just kidding, with a little bit more clear wax. Uh, you see me anytime I'm using these products, I'm actually scooping it out and putting it onto a bowl or in a, on a plate or something like that, just because they're natural and you're not really supposed to um, like cross contaminate it or get any like potential bacteria in it and it'll grow things. Nobody wants to have stuff growing in your paint or anything like that. All right, so anyways, sorry, I get distracted easily, obviously. Um, now I'm gonna go in with the dark wax and I'm really looking to bring out a lot of this more like detail that you've seen here. Like you could see the leaves here at the top and there's actually a bunch of writing on the bottom that's so, so adorable. It says something like an apple a day kind of thing, like 100%. I mean, it's like 100% juice, but that's not shocking that that would be on there. But it says something really cute on there about like something about having an apple a day or drink your apples or I don't know. It's it's really, really cute. I'll try to get a close up here at the end when I show you the finished project, which we're coming to here in just a minute. But I thought that it was too, too cute not to make into like a painted um bottle to hold things, right? Who doesn't need a bottle to hold things? <laughs> but here it is. Like I said, it turned out super cute. I hope you like it too. Leave me a little apple emoji down below if apples are one of your fall favorite things. All right, on to, I believe, our last one for this video. Uh, by the way, there is going to be a part two. Uh, do not forget, I will have a part two to this video. It's going to be a little bit of a different spin. Uh, I'll explain here in a minute. Uh, but I'm going to do some more amber glass. I did it uh, a few videos ago, but I loved it so much. I needed to make some more. So what I'm doing here, I've got some Mod Podge. Uh, it's the Satin Mod Podge. And I'm adding in my food coloring. I do four parts yellow two parts red, one part green. And I doubled it or tripled it by the time it was all said and done. Um, but that's kind of the ratio that I kept. And that gives me a little bit more of my base color. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, it gives me a bit more of like my base color. And then depending on my mood, <laughs> what I feel like doing, if I want to go more in the red direction, more in the yellow direction. So see here I am actually adding, the, again, the same ratio though, four, two, one. You could see it much more clearly here because I ended up doing that three times that on this volume of Mod Podge. That's kind of what you have to take into consideration, right? And then I was like, you know what? I want it to pull a little bit more of like a reddish color, reddish yellow color. So that is what I am going to end up putting in more of those. <clears throat> so you kind of have to play with it and kind of figure out what it is that you want it to pull. I'm going to end up grabbing a piece of just random glass. It actually has some like watered down acrylic paint in it because I made a stain. And that's going to let me see kind of what color it's going. And that's when I was like, you know what, that's kind of my base. Now I'm going to do a little more red and a little more yellow. So I think I did two red, one yellow. Again, that was because I wanted it to, to pull more in that direction. So if you wanted it to keep with that base color, then you can do that. Um, I think it ends up pulling out really, really nice coloring to it. So... So in trying a couple of different ways of doing this um, amber glass, this is my favorite. Uh, I'm going to take my, my um, I don't know what to call it. it basically, it looks like sludge. And I'm going to put it inside of the container. So in this instance, it is a bottle. I have a few different pieces that, that I'm going to be doing this to. This bottle has been in my collection for I don't know how long. Uh, the large one that you see to the right side. Um, is actually a piece that I have done something else to in the past and I didn't like it so I tore it all off and I'm gonna make it an amber glass and you'll see in a few, few minutes here in a second all of the wonderful things don't worry I do take the tag off the bottom of the bottle and here they all are <laughs> super fast transition here um, I I love them I think they are so perfect for fall I think that they are just super classy and so much of what I made today I feel like it like has a has a fall vibe but you can definitely leave it out all year long if these are your colors they might become mine because I kind of love them and I hope you love them too and I do want to let you guys know that Next week, I think I'm going to go for Wednesday, is going to have like a part two from this video. Instead of them being traditional thrift flips, they are actually going to be clearance thrifts. Thrifts. 
That doesn't sound right together. That's hard to say. Clearance thrip flips. All right, so I got this beautiful baby here for, I believe, like two or three bucks. I can't remember and I couldn't see the tag. Uh, this is from Hobby Lobby. And what I'm doing is I've actually removed this metal basket off of the front and I'm filling the holes where it was kind of screwed into the back. I'm just doing that with some of my Starbond quick adhesive stuff. This one is in the color black and that will make more sense in a few minutes when I actually start to, um, you know, if I, when I actually start to paint it. So I only filled the top ones because I am going to screw it back in to something else, but I'm going to put something else on this one. If, if that makes any sense, you'll see what the heck I'm talking about in a few minutes. Um, so I am going in with a little bit of the DIY paint in the color black dress. And by a little bit, I mean, very little bit. I wasn't sure how, how much I wanted to cover it, but I ended up covering it pretty good. And I left some spotchiness, I guess, just to give it kind of a little bit more of a rustic touch. And now I'm going in with a little bit of the surface wax from Chocotour with their particular little applicator. <clears throat> Excuse me, you do not need to use their applicator. Uh, you can use just about anything. I think I used to use like a very large, like hard sponge kind of thing. Not too hard, but you know what I mean. And then I am going to apply this stencil onto it. Now these are a silk screen stencil. So they do have an adhesive side and obviously the, you know, upside. <laughs> and I'm going through with the color rust. Now this ends up looking way more orange than I wanted it to. I wanted it to legit look like rust, but I thought it looked a lot more orange. So I am going to end up uh, doing some distressing to it. So fear not, this video will have lots of wax. <laughs> and uh, I'm just applying that all with a small squeegee. And I really wish I had the bigger squeegee. It would have gone a whole lot faster. Uh, but that color is a fairly new color. And the transfer itself is it like one of the club uh, transfers from last year, but there is going to be a couple of different options, obviously for this. I was going kind of more in the Thanksgiving fall direction. Uh, that is kind of the fallish vibe that I'm going for on this video. And now I'm taking a little bit of dark wax and I'm just kind of going over it. I believe I started, I'm trying to remember if I started with dark wax and then added on some antique wax from uh, folk art, I think I did. I can't remember. This has been a few weeks now that I've made this, I think. And honestly, I don't even have it anymore. I actually took it up to the shop that I'm selling at, which is so exciting. It's over in Oviedo, Florida. If you're in the local area, I'm going to be eventually, I filmed it the last time I was there. I filmed some uh, footage just of, che you know, checking it out, seeing what's in there. I'm going to do something kind of fun with it and actually show you and have you count how many um, things you can find of mine. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking some screws uh, that actually came with this hardware and they're too long. So I made, well, these are already pre-drilled. These are the holes that were on the bottom and I'm adding some hooks. But like I said, the little um, screws were too, were actually too, um, too long. They poked through on one of them, which not a big deal. Um, but obviously if you have a brand new piece of Thing that you're trying to put up on your wall. You don't want the screws poking through because you're going to scratch your paint or scratch your whatever. So I'm going to fill that one with that same Starbond glue, same process as before. But like I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my really heavy duty pliers and I am going to snap off the edge of that screw. Now, if you do not have pre-drilled holes, you'll need to do that first. You'll need to pre-drill because now you've taken away like the point of the screw. But I already have pre-drilled holes, so I didn't have to do it. And then, like I said, just screw it down, just making sure that it doesn't pop out the other side because I wanted the black screws, obviously, so that they would make some sense. And I couldn't get it to sit down in that little hole, so I just kind of hit it with the back of the with the back of the screwdriver because why not, right? That's it seemed to work. And this is a pretty soft uh, piece of, I, th I think it's more like MDF. It's not necessarily wood, so it worked out really easily with that. Again, it, they were pre-drilled, so it didn't uh, it didn't take a lot of effort. So once I eventually, it, it was a little too long, I think. So then I'm going to go ahead and snip off just a smidge more, and then I'll put it in again. Apparently, I'm showing you the whole process, but that's okay. I sound a little um, 
a little weird today because I literally just woke up uh, about 15 minutes ago and when I'm filming this, it is 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> it's when I have time to do the voiceover. So, all right. So now I'm going to add my hardware onto the back. I'm not as worried about the color of the hardware right now because it's on the back. You're not going to see it. I'm going to tape down my pieces that I have. And again, my very technical method here, uh, just tap down the screws. These little screws that come with this hardware from Amazon, they are the tiniest itty bitty little screws ever. <laughs> and they're really hard to work with. So if you happen to get something like this from Amazon, these big like uh, D hooks, uh, make sure that you pre-drill your holes. Otherwise you're gonna be sitting there and struggling and struggling and struggling and struggling. All right, so now I have the metal part. I um, threw this part all together. I'm so sorry. Uh, I thought I've had a little bit of a break in here, but I did not film any or take any pictures of them all by themselves before taking them up to the little shop that I sell at. So this is actually the next project. <laughs> You're going to see in a few minutes the whole reveal, though. I did get that. So I am taking this uh, DIY paint. This one is called Summer Crush, but then I added in just a touch of black, a touch of that little black dress to, again, make it. I wanted it to make it a little darker and I wanted it to be super orange. And this one, I think, does legit end up looking like rust. Now, the DIY paint is a clay-based paint, so when it dries down, it, it it looks a little different. Like, when you're applying it wet, it looks a little different of a color, but rest assured, once it dries down, it will definitely look a lot more like the um, intended color. And you can darken it up, obviously, with wax, which is what I intend to do here because, again, I wanted it to look more like rust. And right here, to me, that is like completely the rust color that I was going for. So now I'm going to take some dark wax and really bring out all of the detail on all of those little greenery pieces. Now, I think this would be super sweet for actual to use for uh, springtime as well. That is what this whole... That's what this piece kind of came off of was, was a string, a spring piece. And I think it was super sweet and super cute, but I, you know, I wanted it to update it for fall and give it a little something different. You know, I wanted it to look super rustic and I think this is definitely making it look super rustic. So I'm kind of going back and forth between the little bit of the paint that I have left on my little plate there and the wax. And if you notice in the bowl, I have like a really darker color. So that is what I'm using. That was my first go around when I added the black to it and I went too far. So I thought this was wax, but this is actually the really deepened, darkened up paint. The Summer Crush with a bit of black. The black is like most black paints. It goes super far. You don't need very much to make different colors. So like I said, I'm kind of going back and forth just to make sure that I get a really nice, um, not transition, but a really nice difference, you know, gr difference between those two paints. And if you go too far, you can always go back to the original one. Now I'm going in with some of the wax as I wanted it a little bit more, you know, just, just a touch more. And I have barely any on my brush. And now I'm going through and I'm adding a lot of that detail with all of those little greenery pieces around the rim. It basically just anywhere that needed a little bit more um, wear and tear, if you will. And I did also end up painting the inside of the bucket just because I was like, you know, if you're pulling things in and out, you want to make sure it looks like it's done. Uh, obviously, once it's filled with, you know, with different florals or pumpkins or whatever it is, you won't really be able to see the inside. But I figured, you know, I'll just do it just because I knew I was planning on reselling it. That has, um, it's been really fun though, having a shop and not, uh, not that the whole shop is mine, of course, but having a place to sell my stuff, it's been kind of fun looking at it and thinking at it about it from that perspective when I've been making stuff. So I've really been enjoying it. So now I have a piece of plywood that I already applied a wood tint to it, dried it, the whole thing. And I'm taking the color faded burlap. And I'm going through and I'm at first I wasn't sure how, you know, again, how much to cover it, how little to cover it. And I decided uh, at first I was like, okay, just a little bit of coverage. And then as I'm doing this, I'm like, oh, wait a minute, I'm going to add letters to this. So you need to be able to see them. And I planned on having them be black letters. So I do end up eventually kind of going in a lot more, uh, which eventually I'll figure that out. And see, I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh wait, nope, need more. <laughs> so then I'm just going to cover it. And now I'm really focusing in up on that top part of it because that is actually where the lettering will go. 
I'm not trying to do full coverage again. I want some of that, you know, some of that stained wood to kind of peek through. And then we will be done with the painting and you'll see it's pretty rough. And I have a couple spots that I've marked as to where the screws have to go. That way I can kind of keep an eye on it while I am putting my letters on. So now I have some stamps from IOD. I've got the ink pad from IOD and their little thin mount, I think is what they call it. Um, and I've actually kind of measured out like where the center is um, on my little thin mount. And I just marked it with some dry erase marker. I did it just by counting the blocks, really. <laughs> um, can't be much more simple than that. And I put out, you know, on there the letters, you know, for hello, fall. Obviously, there's a lot of L's involved in that, uh, those words. So I am going to kind of redo it and I mark again with a little dry erase marker so I can remember where my other letter kind of stopped. See it was right there where the A was. That way I can come back and place it down and be able to do my other L's. I thought that that was personally a little bit ingenious. Um, you will have to leave me a little pin, little marker um, emoji in the comments if you also felt like that was kind of genius. <laughs> Not that I'm tooting my own horn at all, but I thought that was kind of a smart idea. Um, and I don't remember seeing anybody else do it, so um, I'm going to take credit for it. Anyways, uh, so now that my letters are on there, and those dry super fast if you're using the IOD ink, which you don't have to. You can use paint. You can use all kinds of different materials for it. And you obviously have to use stamps. You can use something from your Cricut. You can use anything that you get as far as like the sticker letters, those kind of things. You can use whatever you have but I have stamps, so I'm gonna use them. So now that I have pre-drilled those holes, I'm gonna add some little screws back in. These are the ones that actually came with the bucket. And of course, do you think I could find them all? No, I think I lost one somewhere along the way. I don't know, I, I thought I put them somewhere that made sense, but somehow I lost one of them. So now the bucket part on the bottom, originally it sat flush with the piece of wood. It was actually on the, the flat part but I thought it would be kind of cool to wrap it around the edges because I am going to make this a hanging piece so I'm just going to push those ends around the to the bottom of it and actually just drill in again adding my holes so that I can drill screw in those pieces a little bit easier again and of course when I was doing this somehow along the way it ended up being a little bit cocked but we're not worried about it again I'll show you at the end how it ends up looking so now I have this tray and this one again cost me like next to nothing. Everything I got um, that I showed in this video at least was 90% off. I think at one point I did buy some things at 75% off, but I don't think I showed them in here. You guys will have to let me know as well if you really like the idea of doing these um, clearance flips. It's really hard to say when you're used to saying thrift flip, but it's a clearance flip. All right, so I have, again, like I said, I have this trait, super, super rustic, and it had handles, and I was like, well, handles is kind of weird on this little tray because it's not it's not made to pick up and carry it around, so I decided I did not want the handles. So I cut them off, and then I couldn't get in there enough, so I actually ended up taking a little bit of a lighter to it so that I could kind of burn it and get it flat, and then I added my Starbond glue, which I didn't show you because I've already shown you that a couple of times. So what I'm doing here is I've already applied my milk paint and I'm taking a little bit of a, um, a spritz from my really fine mist sprayer, adding the water to it and going over it with the cloth. What that's doing is really smoothing out the paint job. It's really kind of, um, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it, but it's basically smoothing it out, making it not look so chippy. So I don't know. I like I said, I don't know the best way to describe this, but it's basically smoothing it all out, filling it in on the cracks. And I like the chippy look sometimes, but on this one, I wanted it to look more like that's the color the wood was stained. Either way, you'll have to let me know what you like better. If you liked the chippy look or if you liked the smoother look. So now that I've done that, I'm just going to wear away some of that paint to reveal some of the wood. And it looks really funny because apparently I filmed it in time lapse. So I'm painting some half beads with that same black paint. I'm gonna use those as kind of my feet. So I'm gonna use, of course, the Starbond glue that is in the black, it makes it the easiest. Um, by the way, don't know if you've seen this before, but you can take your um, 
painter's tape, flip it upside down, stick your beads to it. Uh, I think I saw uh, Chalk It Up Fancy do it on Instagram. I'm like, that's genius. Why haven't I thought about that? <laughs> I'm sure other people have done it before, but I just happened to have noticed it when I needed to, right? Instagram gave me what I needed at the moment. I didn't know I needed it. Um, so again, I'm doing the Starbond glue, putting on the glue onto the bottom part of the bead, spray the accelerator, and then it will have feet. Amazing. So here's the whole look of all of it. Uh, this is including the part one uh, from last week. So if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, I had a part one on um, the thrift flip road trip that were more traditional thrift flips. But this week I wanted to do a few uh, clearance flips. So I hope you guys enjoyed them. I think they're really fun to do. And I think a lot of times you can get a better price buying things on clearance to flip them than you can at the thrift store because right now my thrift store astronomical prices sometimes so i hope you guys enjoyed it i hope you like the look of these oh i'm so glad to be back uh so this is a big 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 sign from hobby lobby i got it on clearance for five dollars and 75 cents or 74 cents heck of a deal and it is made to be a sign of course I thought about it after the fact I could have just taken the hardware off and made handles out of that but anyways I took it apart and actually did a quick little saw on the sides because it almost had like a little um a little bit of a lip where it connected to the other one so I sawed that off and did a quick little sand on it and now I'm going in with some folk art uh, wood stain in this walnut color and um, hold on to your brushes folks because I'm going to smear this all over this sur surface. And then once it's dry I do go in with a little bit of sandpaper, a little sanding block and just kind of go on the edges just to rough it up a little bit. Now this uh, is a water-based uh, wood stain, it, or not even really a wood stain, what is it called? A wood tint. It is a water-based wood tint. So you don't get the sticky residue that you would normally have. And I'm just going to go through and really try to remove any excess. You do kind of get a little bit of buildups in spots that you had too much of it. So just kind of be mindful of that and uh, have your sanding block handy. Once that is done, we are going to go in with some surface wax. This is from Chaka Tour. If you haven't figured it out, I'm going to do a Chaka Tour transfer on here because why not? I love it. I love showing it to you guys. I hope you love it. If not, more than likely you wouldn't be here. But anyways, I'm going to do this and I thought this was a really cute thing to put on there. It kind of has a little bit of a fall vibe. That's kind of all my projects today. They have a bit of a fall vibe, but they don't scream fall. So anyways, I'm going to do this one and I'm going to start, I'm going to do it a little differently than the way it's laid out. I'm going to do more aligned to the one side as opposed to the the other side. Like the transfer is built to where it's all lined up on the left and I'm going to have it lined a little bit further to the right. You'll see what I mean in a minute. <laughs> so with the Chalk Tour transfers, you just have some stick on them. I did fuzz it just to take away some of that stick so it's easier to move around, not get stuck on there, not ruin your transfer, all of that good stuff. And I'm going to then look around for my paste and my squeegee. This is in the color Dune. It is a very pretty vanilla-y color. At least that's what I call it. And I'm just going to smear that all through that bottom layer of font. I had thought about just doing that one, but then I was like, well, I think that that doesn't make enough sense. It says build a longer table. I was like, well, let's go ahead and add the other lines too. <laughs> so it's uh, when you have more than you need, build a longer table. The rest of it on the bottom says not a higher fence, but I wanted just to kind of put in that part. So I have a little bit of a crack in this piece of wood. So I am just going to fix that with a little bit of a dowel. I do let it dry just enough so that I can put this down and not smear it everywhere. And just kind of keep that all in mind too, when you are using uh, just any kind of stents of, uh, you know, stencils or anything like that, that have a stickiness to them. You don't want to unstick the part that you just put down. So I'm going to get that lined up and what's great, you can pick them up and move them. Whereas if I did something with my Cricut, that isn't something you can do. You cannot pick it up and move it quite so easily. Um, sometimes if you're lucky, you can. I am usually not that lucky and I usually drop it or something. So then I'm going to go in with the same color again and just go over that. And in a few minutes, I will go ahead and add a little bit of wax to it because I thought it was just a smidge too bright. We are going super 
like industrial farmhouse. So that's what we're doing on these projects, all of these projects. I have some of these little feet. I cut them off of the bottom of some chair legs and they're, so basically they're spindles that I kind of had pre-cut and then I just cut off the bottoms. And now I'm removing all of those nasty bottoms to those feet. I did wipe them all down, you know, want to wipe them all down with rubbing alcohol and get them kind of cleaned off because I am going to put some paint on them. So just wipe them down. I did a little bit of sandpaper on them just to try and get some of this grime off because let's be really honest it's a kitchen chair <laughs> more than likely came from a chair that was in the kitchen and it was from Goodwill so I think I pay like $3.99 for those chairs each one of them and I think I got like three or four of them man it was a good deal so I do paint those in this ink chalk paint from Waverly and I'm going to take my star bond adhesive and apply the glue to one side the accelerator to the other and I had to do that because that particular one was a little bit smaller because precision cutting is really hard on certain things and this was one of those things at least for me so I will repeat the gluing process I add the glue to one side the accelerator to my riser and then I will attach all of my little feet and I do actually on one end up adding a little bit more of that popsicle stick that's what that was by the way I just cut up a little square of a popsicle stick so I'm going to just squeeze out the little bit of the glue, add the accelerator, and put down the foot. Press down firmly for a few seconds, and then you can kind of go about your business and do all of your feet. All of the feet that are necessary. <laughs> um, apparently I need to show you every single one of them, just in case you didn't get the idea. Now on all of these projects today, I am definitely trying to go in this like industrial farmhouse vibe. I think it is absolutely perfect for fall. But then at the same time, you can certainly use these year round. And that's kind of my goal is to start making things that I can be used year round, but I can definitely dress them up for a season or a holiday. All right, so now that that is all done and my paste is all dry, I'm gonna go in with this dark wax from DIY Paint. And I'm just going to take out a little bit out of the jar and use my little, stippling brush whatever you would call this and just kind of put it over on all of that pasted area because I wanted to deepen it up a little bit I felt like it was a little too bright and then once we have done that this project will pretty much be finished let's see all right a little bit more oh that's right I do actually end up taking it across the whole thing because I did some sanding on it and I felt like you know let's put a little bit of it back why not right take it away put it back take it away put it back it's a constant um, battle of how much so now I do want to let you know this little thing is kind of cut a little janky and I was not worried about that I didn't mind it I wasn't trying to be particularly careful when I cut it so here it is though I think it turned out so cute and I cannot wait to style it I'll try to put a video in at the end of how I style it in my house so on to this one now this is the other piece of that board and I'm going to do that same wood tint and I won't show it for you since I showed you the first time I did cut a little bit of a handle on here to be kind of more of like a decorative um, cutting board it's not usable I guess technically if you sealed it you probably could use it but I'm going to go in with another chalk couture transfer I know if you do not want to do chalk couture stuff you can always do stickers you can always do your Cricut um, you can tape it for something like this you could tape it if you really wanted to I think it would take forever but you could do it that's why I have the transfer so I don't have to tape it and take forever all right so this one has gotten a lot of use in its life and what I am doing is because it is not really that sticky anymore I am taking this stencil spray and I just spray it onto my transfer press it on down like you normally would chalk on it like you normally would and you wash it just like normal all of the normal stuff except you have to spray it the first when you're using it you would spray it probably every time you're going to use it to be honest so I'm going to go in with my slightly bigger squeegee which is actually called a small squeegee funny enough it's not that small um, but I'm going to go in with this black velvet chalk paste I wanted to make this way more subtle and kind of blend in like you can definitely still see it you will see it in a minute you can see it but it is not super in your face it's very subtle I like it I am really liking this whole industrial farmhouse kind of look where it's definitely still in the farmhouse family but it's just a little something different you know it's darker my um, my house I think lends to this 
you know, smaller subgenre of farmhouse better than any other. So it's only taken me, you know, like two years on <laughs> on making YouTube videos that I found a decor style that fits my home and my preferences. So now what I'm doing is I'm taking that same transfer and I have not cleaned it off, obviously. And I'm just going to realign it with the part that I've already done. Uh, usually this is much simpler than the way it looks right now, but that is because it is so dark <laughs> and the surface is dark, the paste is dark. It's a little harder to do than it normally would be. But I'm going to fiddle around with it here for a minute, get it just right to where it lines up. Um, what I like to do is I kind of use the area that's already pasted on and then I line it up and just try not to overlap too much. Otherwise it'll be a little thicker. And if it's a little thicker, it's not the end of the world. So I will then come in, see I actually have like a little bit of a line there. That is essentially where the other part of the paste is from the first layer. Now mind you, this first layer has dried completely. I believe I hit it with a little bit of my heat gun just in the middle of that, just to, you know, I didn't obviously show you, but just so that it would dry completely because that stickiness can, you know, pull up some of the paste. You don't really want that unless you do. Sometimes you do, right? So I just put it on and see it matched up almost perfectly. I have like a little line that I need to fix and I'm just going to do that with a little paintbrush with a little bit of the paste that's actually left over on the squeegee and just kind of fill it in and you know what? It'll be none the wiser. No one will know. Nobody's going to know except for you and me and everybody who watches this video. But here's how it turned out. Super cute. Like I said, definitely has fall vibes, but it can be sent out, set out all year long. So we're going to go ahead and make some amber glass. And I have to be honest, guys, I'm kind of obsessed. So you're probably going to see this again. <laughs> uh, I'm just cleaning off the outside part of my glass with some rubbing alcohol. And I'm going to mix in some satin Mod Podge with some food coloring. I'll list kind of more of an idea of the actual like color ratio down below. Uh, I did a test. I would recommend that as you're kind of figuring out what color, how much of a certain color to use, do kind of a little test, let it dry for a minute, hit it with your heat gun, something like that. Um, I am applying this one to the outside. However, I did some where I actually poured it inside and then let it run out. I hope that makes sense. I didn't show you guys, so I really hope that makes sense. But that is probably my preferred method after I did, after it's all said and done. I had two that were one way, you know, the painting on the outside and two that I poured in and then poured out. And that is definitely my preferred way because it gives it a completely smooth finish, obviously because it's glass on the outside. Uh, but that's my personal preference. Um, and here they are. <laughs> really fast DIY. This one doesn't take a ton of time. And I'll list the color ratios and everything down below. All right, so onto this one. I'm using this plaque that I've already stained and I am gonna use some of this Pint Art decoupaging varnish and glue. And I get that from uh, My Victorian Heart and uh, the shop owner's name is Kimberly. That's also where I got the decoupage paper. So if you like those, check them out. I think she is absolutely amazing and she always packs everything so beautifully like, like you're getting a present in the mail. Uh, so the stain that you see here is already done. That one is dark walnut, I believe by Midwax. And what I'm doing is I'm doing a very thin coat of this decoupage glue for lack of a better word. And I got the ruler out to kind of figure out where my middle point is just to make sure I am putting that stripe kind of there in the middle. And once I figure out basically where my middle is, I do just put a little mark on it with the pencil. You won't see it in a few minutes anyways. I should have done that before putting down the uh, actual like gel medium glue varnish, whatever you want to call it, um, just because it did start to dry a little bit, but it's okay. I made it work. All right. So once I've gotten that first section down, I'm going to go ahead and just slather on all of the decoupage glue. That way I can go ahead and get the rest of it kind of stuck down to the wood. Now I didn't mind it on this one, uh, but a lot of times I will actually do a white background. I thought I want, I didn't mind a little bit of darker. You know what I mean? Like I thought a little darker is not going to be a bad thing. I think it is just perfect for this whole theme and kind of giving you a little bit more more of like the fall vibes because it is, you know, a little bit darker tones and warmer tones and just, I love it. I love, I love fall colors. I love just the warmer sense of colors and stuff like that. If, if that makes any sense. <laughs> All right. 
I have smoothed it all down and now I'm gonna just go around all of the edges, make sure that there's any spots that need a little bit more of that glue. I'm gonna use this from IOD. This is just, I think their most recent release of the letters. And you can get that from Kimberly over at My Victorian Heart as well, if you're interested. This is not sponsored, by the way. She's just, I think, absolutely amazing. So I spelled out the word gather, and now I'm gonna take the ink and just basically cover the ink surface. Usually you do not need that much, but this ink is a lot dry. I really should have refilled it, but I didn't wanna do it. <laughs> and as you can see, I lined up my letters on this little piece of plastic. It's a harder plastic, and it made it so much easier. Look at that, I mean, come on so much easier to do that. This might be one of my preferred ways to do shorter, smaller words. And I didn't have to worry about it, you know, with my using Cricut vinyl or anything like that. I didn't have to worry about it getting stuck. It's super fast, super easy. I trimmed off, as you can see, all of the last little bit of that paper. And now I'm gonna go in and add a little bit of wax. <laughs> Why not, right? Uh, this is dark wax and this is from DIY. It's like DIY paint or DIY, Debbie's DIY. I can't remember the exact name. I get it from my friend Brie over at Upcycled by Brie. I'll list her website for you down below too in case you're interested in picking any up from her. And I'm gonna take that all around the perimeter of this sign because I thought that the dark walnut wasn't quite dark enough, at least not for this video, for the purpose of this video at least. <laughs> it wasn't quite dark enough, so I darkened it up with that. And I'm of course not really worried too much if I get any of that wax on the actual paper part. It's just gonna add a little bit more depth, a little more detail to it. So I am just fine with it. <laughs> Sorry, um, apparently we have a thunderstorm going on right now. If you could hear that. <laughs> um, Florida, summertime in Florida. It's unavoidable. Um, anytime you're using like those DIY products though, they are made, uh, there are a lot more natural made ingredients. So try to avoid dipping your brush right into it because you don't want to contaminate it or contaminate it, <laughs> contaminate it. So just keep that in mind if you do get those products. Then I'm gonna take, I had it just sitting on a baby wipe. I had a scoop of it. So I figured I'm gonna use that last little bit and go all around. And I'm sorry about the coloring in this video. I don't, in this little part of it, I don't know what the heck's going on. Anyways, that's it. It is all finished. And you get to take a look at all of my finished projects. I love how everything turned out. I think this is like my new, my new look for my house, I think. It took me, a long time to get to this point to realize that this is the one I wanted to do. But I think this is gonna look so nice in my house, perfect for fall, and even just, at, and even more perfect because you can leave it out all year long. So we've got one of these boards. I got it at a thrift store and it was two pieces and it was two for $5.99. So I'm counting this as only $3. And I combined these two wood tents. One is walnut, one is gray and you didn't really need to do that. <laughs> and then I'm gonna take my Chocotour surface wax and I am gonna just apply it all over. I used a paper towel for this. Word to the wise, you'll find out in a few minutes. Um, this isn't the best application method. I have learned my lesson. <laughs> uh, but then I'm gonna tape all around the edges and I'm gonna pull out my transfer so that I can get it all lined up. This is the mini Buffalo plaid check. It's an 18 by 18, so this sucker is big. I went ahead and did all of my fuzzing. I'm gonna try my best to use like all the right words. So <laughs> um, I'm gonna get it all positioned, you know, where I want it to be. It's one of those things, since it's a circle, I mean, can it really be wrong? can it? I, I'm going to go with a can't. So, but I'm still trying my best to get it lined up as, as much as a what makes sense. And then we're going to just take our chalk paste in storm and we're just going to smudge it all over the place. Now this awesome uh, 18 by 18 transfer is available. And if you're interested in it, let me know. I would love to help you pick out some different things and really come with like a good, you know, a good selection of stuff. Now I'm going to let you know, obviously this transfer does not cost under $5, but uh, as a designer, it cost me 18 and you can get probably 10 uses at a minimum off of it. So I'm going to count it as costing me less than $2. Uh, maybe that's cheating, but I am not a real follower. <laughs> I really am though. All right. So we're going to take the transfer off and I'm going to show you, I, I messed up a little bit on the wax. I did not buff it in as much as I should have. And I definitely needed to 
let it sit as well. I have since used the wax and done it successfully. So I filled in a couple of spots um, that ended up having a lot of the uh, paste come off and then I'm going to sand it just to try to like get it to look right all together. And I, I did an or I did my orbital sander over the whole thing to kind of get that really worn look. I still like the way it came out. I'm really happy. I just kind of let the crafts tell me what they wanted to be today. <laughs> and on the next one, I have a Dollar Tree pumpkin. And uh, don't get mad at me. This was supposed to just be everyday farmhouse decor. But I had to throw in a little bit of fall because there's so many beautiful fall DIYs out there right now. And I just needed at least a couple little touches of it in this video. Uh, so I do try my darndest to get this thing to stick in the middle, but it was not working. The gap wasn't the right size for those little, you know, beads. So what I'll do is I'll just put down a you know, a, a line of hot glue and then I'll put my beads down. I wasn't worried about them being even across the top. You know what I mean? Like I didn't mind them being a little bit off here and there. I kind of made sure they weren't too close. Like this one, I'm going a little bit lower. Some of the other ones will go a, bit, a little bit higher. I, I didn't want it to look like they were off on purpose. I wanted them to be off on, uh, you know, or I mean, I wanted them to look off on purpose, not to be off by accident. I think you know what I mean. If you want to make them as even as possible, I would recommend starting your little string of beads at the bottom. If you do it from the bottom and go up to the top, you can kind of make sure you're getting the same number of them all the way around. And I think it'd be more even that way. Once we're done with that and everything's dried down, I'm going to just, you know, do a couple little touch ups here and there if it needs it. And once that is finished and those are good to go, we're going to take out our Waverly plaster chalk paint and we're going to do two, to two coats total. And especially on that first coat, what you want to do is really get in there in between all of the grooves, get your paintbrush really in there. I found that a flat paintbrush seemed to work the best. Once you've gotten your two coats on it, we're going to move on to the good old antiquing wax. When in doubt, in its farmhouse, just throw in some antique wax. There should be a slogan in there somewhere. I'm sure there's something in there for a slogan. <laughs> and I'm just going to dry brush and pay really a lot more attention to where the beading is. And I'll still get in there and get on the sides too. I didn't want there to be like a real stark difference, but I really wanted to bring out that beadwork. And we're just, like I said, I'm, I'm just going in with it today. Everything's farmhouse. It's all going to be a little bit rustic. And how could you not do a pumpkin in August if it's rustic? Here it is. It turned out really, really cute. I'm loving it. All right, we are starting off with, big surprise, a pumpkin. Um, I'm just going to do a full coating of the wood tent in gray and now I've got some of these transfers from Chocotour and these are actually all from one transfer. I did not have to fuzz them because I have used them before. Uh, they are reusable if you didn't know that and they uh, I tested it on my little pumpkin just to see if they felt like they were sticking enough too much that kind of thing. So I'm just kind of gonna go with it. I'm gonna just lay them down onto my pumpkin that's already ready to go. It's already waxed. I use a surface wax from Chocotour and I'm going to take the chalk paste in the color camel and in the color storm and I'm going to mix it up. This is looking like it's going to be kind of like on a green color and it's not. It does not come across green at all. It is just a little bit darker of that tan color that is from the camel one. That way it would kind of stand out just a little bit. I don't want it to stand out too much because I want it to be a lot more subtle. And we are going to do the same thing on the other transfer. And I should have mixed just a little bit more because I was really scraping <laughs> to get it off. And now what you're going to see in a minute is the one on the left ends up being a lot more faint. Uh, to avoid that, if you water down your paste just a little bit, because mine had dried a little while I was mixing it, plus it was from a packet that was already opened, you just add a little bit of water and that will remedy it just fine. Like I'm actually going to add a little more water to it because I can feel it getting dry and I should have done that from the beginning. So 
I'm okay with the way it turns out, which you'll see here in a minute. Super fast to do these. This, like I said, is all on one transfer. It is a C-size transfer for it's rather large, but you just kind of cut it up. So you'll see on the one on the left, it is, like I said, a little faint, but that's all right. So I went ahead, let it dry completely. It's super fast to have that dry. And I waxed on top of it. And now I am taking, it's, it's actually the same two colors, but I used a lot more of the Storm chalk paste. And I'm going over the wording on this one, which is also, again, like I said, all one transfer, which it says, heaven is under our feet as well as over our heads. And I thought it went really well with kind of this like cottage core fall kind of theme. I added a little bit of twine on the top and I love the way it turned out. All right, on this next project, I am taking some of this decoupage paper and I am going to leave the little shop that I get it from below. It's from My Victorian Heart. That's the shop, not the brand, obviously. Um, she's based out of St. Augustine, Florida. If you live in Florida, you're going to get it super, super fast. <laughs> Um, and she always, uh, she actually usually will sh be able to ship out like the next business day. So even if you don't live in Florida, you're going to get it pretty quick. She's got lots of different kinds of pro products and she just filled up a bunch of different ones. And I'm kind of thinking I might have to make another order. <laughs> so obviously this pumpkin one was kind of perfect. And I am going to just use this silver tray from the Dollar Tree. And I painted that in actually a combination of colors. It's both Whispering Wheat and Sheepskin, both from Folk Art. I did two coats around the rim of it. And on the middle part, I didn't really care because that's where our paper's going. Now what you just saw me mix is actually a combination of the Waverly chalk paint in moss and the clear wax. I did a coat of the clear wax by itself first and then I'm just going to brush on my, I'm gonna call it tinted wax because it's tinted with paint. So you can do this with anything you want. So if you don't have the right wax color, you just get yourself some clear wax or white wax and mix it yourself. Obviously the white wax would tone it down a little bit. You know, it's gonna obviously take away more of the color than the clear wax. This one's obviously pretty toned down too. The moss colored paint is a lot stronger green, if that makes sense. Next, you probably are not surprised if you've been here for a while. <laughs> I'm gonna take some of the Folk Art Antique Wax in, Antique Wax, Never mind. It's just Antique Wax. Um, <laughs> Now, obviously, Way really makes one too, but I found this one first way back during like the pandemic. Nobody had paint products. It was like a shortage across the world. I don't really know, but I'm guessing it because I know I couldn't find it in my Walmart. <laughs> and I really wanted to bring out a lot of the detailing. You can definitely up, you know, up close. You can see the green from the, you know, the green wax. You can see the black, the grit. I cannot talk today. You can see the brown and all that. Now I've got my decoupage paper. I've already cut it out because it had a couple of different um, designs on there, but I'm laying it where I want and I'm actually taking my fingernail and pressing into it to kind of make like a line. That way I know where to cut without having to mark it up. Another way you can do as well is you can actually, you know, put down your Mod Podge and then take your craft knife and actually go around the perimeter, which I do end up doing just to clean it up because I had a couple of spots that weren't exactly right, you know, where I wanted them. So I think the combination of those two seems to get like the, at least to me, got a pretty good result. You want a pretty thin coat. Now this paper is a little bit thicker than like tissue paper would be. I still got a little bit of lines and I'm okay with it. It doesn't bother me. Um, maybe someday I will figure out a method to apply <laughs> Mod Podge without there being any wrinkles, but that's all right. This is all looking very worn and everything. So I'm just fine with that. Now, of course, I'm going in with some more antique wax. I just wanted to take it around like the perimeter, a little heavier, you know, of that actual paper part that's in the tray and then I'll go over the whole thing too just to give it a little age really to bring out those details of those wrinkles because I was like you know what if they're gonna be there it may as well look like they're supposed to be there <laughs> they were though totally I totally meant to make it wrinkly but it's not too bad it's not that much in the wrinkles and once we're done with that I do need to add some feet I decided I didn't want it hanging as like a 
something to hang back. I wanted to be able to put things on top of it. So I'm taking this fix all from Dollar Tree. Obviously this is a metal tray. Metal and hot glue just they're not friends so they don't really stick around together. You know they're not BFFs as you would say. Um, so I've got these little blocks. They're actually from a little toy at the Dollar Tree. It's like a brain teaser game and they're just perfect. And what's nice, you do have a little bit of time to wiggle them around, get them where you want them. And here is how it turned out. I just think it is the cutest thing. All right, I've got another pumpkin. I know, it's such a shocker. Um, and this one is also from Dollar Tree. And now I've got some of this terracotta paint. It is actually from folk art and I am just going to give it a full coating of this. It's kind of like a white color. I'll leave the exact names for all of the paints down for you in the description box as well as everything else that I've used today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a full coat of the paint and I'll let it dry and then I'm going to come back with another coat but on this one I'm actually going to stipple it on. When you stipple on with this paint you're going to get even more texture. You get a very like surprise terracotta you know look to the paint but then when you stipple it it's going to give it even more texture even more of that look i've got this little dish stand thing i'm not really sure what to call it um from michael's when they had 70 percent off and i started painting it and i decided i wanted to just paint the top part this color this is cavern moss it was kind of perfect for this you know little theme i've got and now i've got another one that i'm going to put on there and that one is called dusty trail I didn't really love it. I'll be honest. I didn't love the way it looked next to, you know, this other next to this uh, cavern moss one. So I'm going to take the black, which is called obsidian, and I'm just going to stipple that on. Uh, so the cavern moss is only one coat. And I figured when I did that, I was like, well, I don't love it. So let me do something else. I'm going to just kind of put this on there and it's going to give it again, that really worn look to me. I was like, this is just some little piece, you know, sitting outside of the cottage in the woods. Do you guys do this? Do you make up stories in your mind for your stuff that you're making? <laughs> I find that I've been doing it a lot lately. I'm like, I have a story to tell with these pieces. I hope you enjoy the story. I don't know. <laughs> um, and then of course, going back in with some of the antique wax, I'm going just over it very lightly. I wanted to bring out a lot more of the detail in the little cup part on the top. Uh, obviously you can see them, they pretty, they are pretty defined, but I figured, you know what, I'm going to just make it even more so, give it a little bit more of a wear worn, you know, worn look to it. With this terracotta paint, it adds so much texture so that antique wax is really going to kind of grab onto that and really amplify it. And I kind of love it, if you couldn't tell, since I've used it on a few different things so far. <laughs> And now I'm going to do the same thing with my little pumpkin. It needed a little bit more definition to it. I'll focus a lot on the stem. And, and I know I've actually had a couple subscribers tell me the technical name for it. And I cannot remember it. And I think if I remember right, it was a word I didn't know how to pronounce. <laughs> so I'm going to call it the stem. And another one of my subscribers, Bridget, she's the sweetest thing ever. Uh, she calls these love handles on the pumpkin, and I kind of love that. I was like, well, that's what they are from now on. They have a more technical name, too. But love handles, how do you not love that? I love love handles on my pumpkins. Um, <laughs> and once I have gotten all of the antique wax, here it is. I added just some moss. I put a tumbling tower block underneath it to kind of boost it up a little. All right, so I have this little trinket box from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna paint the bottom in the Waverly chalk paint in moss, and I'm gonna combine those two colors just like I did on the previous project, uh, like two projects ago. Um, I have this stencil from the Dollar Tree, and I cut it off of the other part, and I was like, oh, I guess I didn't really technically have to do that. It's it's a you know adhesive sticker. Obviously, it's getting stuck to itself right now, so be careful of that. <laughs> and I'm just going to put that down on the bottom. It's almost kind of like a, it's not even like ivy so much. I don't know. I don't really know what to call this, but it just kind of spoke to me. It said, put me on your pumpkins. Um, <laughs> that was it speaking, if you couldn't figure that out. Uh, now I've got some of the caulking from Dollar Tree. It's obviously not in the crafting section, but apparently it should be. Um, it's in like the like the hardware-ish kind of area. And I'm just going to use a craft stick just to smooth it on. Now I will let you know, this um, 
it gets a little bit difficult to work with, so just kind of smooth it best you can. I think I probably should have dipped my um, craft stick in like a little bit of water, and that probably would have let me smooth over it a little bit more. Uh, some of the spots messed up a little bit, but I'm, you know, I'm okay with it. It kind of turned out a little nice. And what I do end up doing eventually, once I get done with this part, I actually take it off and I try to clean off some of the, you know, leftover caulking, but I didn't clean off that particularly well. So this first peel, you see, it turned out pretty good. And then I put it on the other part and it didn't turn out as good, but that's all right. Um, so before it's completely dry, I'm going to just go in and pat it down because it has some spots where it's obviously, you know, thicker than other spots and it's kind of, you know, sticking up in little, little spots. So I figured this would help me get it a little bit smoother, a little more consistent. I'll go over that, you know, again, same chalk paint, the moss from Waverly, go over it pretty hefty. And I originally, I was just going to go over the green part or not the green, the whole thing is green. You know what I mean? The part that I added on with the stencil. And then I was like, well, I better pull it up just a little bit in case there's, you know, a little difference in it with the, you know, opacity of the paint. If you kind of know what I'm talking about, hopefully you do. Otherwise, you're watching the screen and can figure it out. <laughs> All right. Now, of course, we need to go in with the antique wax. And this is just going to add a lot more definition. It depends on, you know, on your overall look that you're going for. You could have just, paint, you know, gone in and carefully painted all of that, you know, raised area. I thought that that would have probably taken me, you know, three and a half years. So I decided not to do that. But of course, we're going to use the antique wax to really bring out the detail and I can't leave the rest of it alone naturally. So I'm just going to go through and add a little light brushing all around as well. I did paint the inside too, which it does need another coat, but I was like, they get the idea. <laughs> I'm going to do it to the lid as well, just because it seemed like it needed a little something. It couldn't be completely, you know, perfect. I've got this teeny tiny little um, piece of wood. It's actually off of some antique stuff. I have probably, oh my gosh, I probably have like a hundred of these little things or more. Um, but I cut down the ba bottom side of it and I'm just going to put it on the lid to be my little stem for my pumpkin. It's, it's obviously an interpretation, um, but I think you get There's the idea. So, so we have this harvest garland from Pottery Barn for $149. I've got some of these Dollar Tree picks uh, that are pumpkins. They came in like a four pack and I just coated them all completely with some of this terracotta white paint. And now I'm just going to trim off all of these little leaf picks also from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to just start kind of pushing them into this reef form again from Dollar Tree <laughs> and this wreath form and the picks all together I mean maybe five dollars at most so $149 it is not um don't get me wrong I am sure that the one from Pottery Barn is gorgeous probably bigger than this but it did not cost me $149 to put this together. <laughs> so definitely um, check out the Dollar Tree for these white leaves. They're just absolutely gorgeous, so neutral. And um, and I took a lot of these little pumpkin picks. Now the one I am finagling right now, it came in a different pack. I did the same thing. I painted it with that same paint color. And that one, if I can find it on my desk, is called the terracotta and that is adobe white you can get them at hobby lobby you can get them at michael's uh, make sure when you buy them that you get them with a 30 percent off coupon because they are not cheap i think it's like four bucks a bottle but again if you use your 30 percent off it's not too bad and they do have really good coverage and they give you a really cool texture which you'll see in a few minutes because i'm going to use a lot of them <laughs> They were sent to me, a few of them. I think I have about half of my collection was sent to me, half of it I couldn't wait and I bought it. Now I'm taking some of these sticks. They're from a bundle that I have some like dried flowers that I've kind of had sitting in my stash for a little while. And obviously, depending on the kinds of trees you have in your neighborhood, your yard, you can just pick them up off the ground and use them for the same thing. It's just in the reef that I am trying to replicate, they had a lot of these kind of sticks. And I thought that was, 
that wasn't going to happen. There's not going to be that much. And then these are in that same pack of all the dried sticks. Uh, just a couple little extra things just to kind of give it a little, you know, a little something. Here's how it turned out. And there's the comparison. Like I said, it came out pretty good, I have to say. And we're going to do this pumpkin from Kirkland's on sale right now. It's just over $26. And again, we're going to use some Dollar Tree stuff. I've already filled in little holes and this slotted pumpkin. Again, you can get it at the Dollar Tree. I gave it a full coat of the Waverly chalk paint and ink. And then I am using this galvanized welcome sign also from the Dollar Tree. I did just a full coat of Mod Podge and then went over that with the white Adirondack paint from Folk Art. I'm going to get my E6000 out and give it a few little dollops throughout on the back side of the galvanized sign and then do the same with some hot glue. The metal, it does not like hot glue. It does not like paint. So you have to kind of work with it and kind of make it work, you know, with whatever you've got essentially. And of course I had like a little spillage of the glue, but that's okay. I'm gonna take apart this little pumpkin sign and I kind of broke it in the process, but that's okay. We're gonna, we're gonna make it work today. And you're just gonna put some hot glue there in that little crevice, push your, you know, slotted pumpkin in and I'll add, oh, there's my head, sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to add a couple of tumbling tower blocks to the back, give it a little added security so it doesn't go anywhere. Just so, you know, like I said, it's it's just, it's going to be set. It's not going nowhere. Here's my project and our other one that I was replicating and I need to add the bow still, but next we're going to make some pumpkins. There's a lot of pumpkins today. Now these ones from Kirkland's, they were more of a foam pumpkin. Um, I'm going to use some more terracotta paint. They had that kind of look to them, so that's what I was going with. Now on this one, I am going to do, I believe it ends up being like two or so coats. This first terracotta, sorry, I had to reach for it. This first one here is terracotta. Terrazano Tan. I'm going to leave it listed for you below though, all of today's paint colors because I probably said it wrong and that's okay. I'm just kind of showing you it goes on really nicely and I'm going to do another pumpkin in this more of like a blue tone color and again I can't remember the name of it offhand and it is Sea Stone. I do about two coats on both of the different pumpkins just to kind of make sure they're nice and opaque. You can um, you can give it a lot more texture if you pounce your paint on your surfaces. It just kind of depends on how much texture you want to get from it. I liked more of the smooth look to it, but that was just my preference. So you do you. You do what you like. And once we are done with our two coats on both of them, I felt like I kind of needed a little bit more. And we're going to go in with a little bit deeper of a shade on the same kind of terracotta paint. I'm just going to go over the stem on both of those pumpkins. And I'll be honest, I got a little, you know, a little messy. I wasn't being particularly careful. And on this one, I did more of like a pouncing to leave some of that darker brown because it just needed, you know, a little bit more texture to it. There was a lot of texture, but that's okay. They make this one. This one is called Obsidian, and I'm just going to pounce it on again. Like I said, I just wanted to build it up a little bit more. My, uh, you know, my two that I'm trying to dupe are actually a lot more of a monotone color, if that makes any sense to you. And I didn't really want to go that route, so I'm changing it up a little bit. I kind of kept layering on the stem just to make it more of what I wanted. And then I was like, I got some on my pumpkin. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go with it. So I took it in and did a little bit of dry brushing around the pumpkin. And then I really focused in a little bit more in the creases. And I went ahead and did that to the blue pumpkin as well. Just because, like I said, I wanted just to build it up and get a little bit different of a look. And you'll see here the finished and the comparison. And I think I like mine better. And they're not foam. So, all right. We've got this one for $11.99 from Hobby Lobby. I'm starting off with another one of their more like wood tone looking pumpkins. I've done something similar to this already this year, but this one's a little different. And I loved the way it turned out, so I wanted to show you. I'm taking the Dollar Tree little beads, um, little sticker beads, and I'm putting them down kind of like the middle point, the high point on each little pumpkin area. I don't even know what to call that. Does that have a name? You guys all have to let me know. Uh, I'm going to take Folk Art, Sheepskin, and Waverly in Hazelnut. 
I'm kind of mixing them up together because I didn't, I don't know, it was like the one was too dark. I didn't have, you know, one that was a lighter color and it ends up being this atrocious color when you're looking at it like this. But don't worry, we're working with it. I'm going to take some antique wax and some white wax. I mixed those two together and I'm going to give it a layer of this now. I'm doing a pretty messy like layering of it. I'm not doing a dry brush by any means, but I'm doing it kind of messy that way. If some of that tannish colored paint sneaks through, it's all right. If it's more opaque, it's also all right. And like I said, we're just kind of layering things on today and I'm kind of digging the overall effect that I've gotten today. <laughs> And we're adding yet another layer. Now we've got the Waverly chalk paint in plaster. And at first I was like, I'm just going to dry brush it on. And then I looked at my, you know, my dupe, my, my picture that I'm trying to dupe. And I was like, mm, nope, it's not like that. It's not like that at all, Teresa. So then I was like, Meh. well, why not? We're just going to paint the whole thing with the plaster. Like I said, guys, today is just all about layering. And now I've got some, again, same thing. I've got the, a little deeper this time, I should say, the antique wax with the white wax. And now I'm going over mostly in like the little bubble beaded areas to give them, you know, a lot more definition. Man, these things like pop out at you. You can see them. There's no mistaking it. They're there. <laughs> and this one is funny. It's like, I almost feel like this one didn't go as well with everything else. This one was way more in like the rustic direction. And the other ones before this, I felt like kind of went in like a cottage core kind of feeling to it. So it was like I said, I was trying to do like cottage core stuff. And I did this one and I was like, well, I'm just going to throw it in there because I like it. It's a little bit more eclectic today, but that's all right. It's all fall. It's all dupes. So they're all under $5, which is amazing. Yeah, I didn't use my Cricut, guys. <laughs> Here it is, though. As compared to the original one, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. All right, so on this one, $44 from Magnolia. That is the one... Um, the fix it up show that they have on like HGTV. And this one is definitely a lot more on the inspired direction because it's got a texture on the bottle. It's not the same size. It's a similar shape. So it's what I had and it got it to the point where I could actually use something out of my like extensive collection of glass and ceramic stuff. So I went with it. I did two coats, uh, probably about a, maybe like a little bit extra just to fill in any spots I missed just because I felt like it needed it. And I love the red color though. I really didn't know if I was going to love it, but I do. Here it is. I just added some dried flowers. Hey everyone, I hope you really enjoyed today's video. It had so many different things for fall. I cannot wait for the weather to start cooling down. I've got a little while for that to happen, but I hope that it's starting to cool down for you and I will see you next time. Don't forget if you have not previously subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and click that icon right down below that says subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up and here's another video that you might be interested in checking out.